In his distinguished political and diplomatic career, Sumer Sumadai served as both Iraq's ambassador to the United Nations and the United States. He's currently with the Wilson International Center for Scholars and joins us here in Washington. Ambassador, thank you uh, so much uh, for joining us. Thank you. What's your takeaway from the Prime Minister's visit here to Washington? Did he get what he wanted? Uh, yes, I think. Uh, th the main purpose of the visit was that it should have taken place. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, uh, there is so much to be discussed and so much going on in Iraq. And uh, I, I think for the prime minister to be seen here in Washington talking about the needs of Iraq was important. But is it just a photo op? Because there was a, uh, there was a shopping list, wasn't yes. there? Especially when it came to uh, weapons. Now, the U.S. is supplying training and light weapons, but it's the heavy weapons that yes. Iraq has wanted since the days of Prime Minister Maliki, and they haven't got those yet. Well, I've just come, literally, just in the last 15 minutes, come from a, a talk given by the Prime Minister. I saw him last night as well. But uh, in this talk, he made it clear that there was no such thing as a shopping list. We must understand that there is a, a daily uh, ongoing coordination going on in the theater in Baghdad, in Iraq, between the United States and the Iraqi government. So the United States is aware of the theater uh, in Iraq and what the Iraqi government needs. They, they are rebuilding the Iraqi army. They are uh, equipping. And so all that is quite clear. In this uh, visit, he highlighted uh, the, the, these needs and asked for accelerating the deliveries uh, and, uh, uh, and accelerating also the airstrikes. Sometimes the um, sort of Iraqi forces need or identifies uh, a location where, where Daesh, ISIS uh, fighters are and ask for a, a strike. And this takes a while before it happens. And you know, as, as things happen, so so has the U.S. Uh, been uh, quick enough, not just in, in airstrikes, but in supplying um, its now Iraqi allies? You have an administration, let's face it, that, that came to power wanting to get out of Iraq. Uh, now, there are 3,000 U.S. troops there. They're, they're training Iraqi uh, uh, troops for an assault on Mosul, but also to retake other areas as well. Um, do you feel that there's sometimes a lack of commitment given where this U.S. president came in from when it came to Iraq? Well, well it's not so much lack of commitment as, as the events um, unfolded after the withdrawal of the American uh, forces. The vacuum was created. Uh, there, were, there was gross mismanagement by the previous government, the Iraqi government, uh, created the conditions for this onslaught by the terrorists. So we are where we are. The Americans felt that they had to be re-engaged. Uh, well, that's true. But also, wasn't uh, the Prime Minister al-Maliki and others warning the US that, that ISIL it was a growing threat and asked for weapons uh, a long time ago and asked for support? But that was a time, politically, when the drawdown was still happening. Well, not quite like that. Uh, actually, the, the Iraqi Maliki was asking all the time for equipment. But in the context of, of an Iraqi army which looked strong and good from the outside until it was tested. When it was tested, it collapsed. And, and then that was the uh, last June when you remember the ISIS uh, onslaught and, 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 and the fall of Mosul. That was what triggered the re-engagement of the United States. And the U.S. is back. Airstrikes, we're hearing from the Pentagon, uh, have helped reclaim around a quarter of territory taken by us. So that's an, uh, an American figure. But it's not just uh, the Americans who have helped out. Uh, we've had uh, help uh, on the ground from Iran and Shiite militias. Um, is that a difficult position for Iraq to be in, considering uh, Iran and the U.S.'s relations in the region? Well, you put your finger on it, Nathan. What's more important than the military, although it is very important, the mil what goes on uh, in, in this military battle is important, but the political side is just as important, if not more important, because there can be no victory uh, on the mili military side unless the politics 
uh, 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 sorted out. I'm glad you said that. Let's listen to the Prime Minister and his diplomatic balancing act when it comes to Iran. I'm aware that regional countries have their own interests, and I respect these interests. However, we do not accept any intervention in Iraq or any transgression on Iraqi sovereignty. So that was Prime Minister Abadi yes. responding to American concerns that some of the Shiite militias, <coughs> according to Washington, uh, kind of are not controlled by the Iraqi government. Considering how well placed you are, could you respond to that? Well, you know, Prime Minister Abadi is, is a good man. I've known him for a long time. He's full of good intentions. He has made all the right noises, all the right declaration. The big question is how much control does he have? And that is where uh, it remains to be seen. It's like driving a car with a, a rubber steering column. You want it to go right, it doesn't always respond. And it's particularly difficult when your uh, tank is not full of fuel, the Iraqi economy is is in difficulties because of the oil prices, the right. revenue of the government is low. So he, his ability to give effect to his intentions is, I think, limited. So specifically in terms of Iran, is he in control of that policy? Of, of, of when Iran has promised forces, helped out, retake some areas? Even? Well, he, he can try to curtail their influence, but we must remember, they have a lot of instruments on the ground in Iraq through the militias that they have, they have uh, trained and they, 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 they have great influence over, and they have uh, access to a lot of uh, parts of the government. So, yes, they, they, he might say the right things to the Iranians. The Iranians might also say the right things to him. But what actually happens within government and within the uh, armed forces, and by armed forces I mean here not only the official armed forces, but everybody fighting Daesh, it's a different story. And now Iran has actually helped the Iraqi forces because there's a lot of Sunni uh, areas, uh, countries in the region who have, who have criticized Iranian involvement, but there hasn't been many Sunni countries actually giving aid, has there? I mean, Jordan is one, but, but others have not. So in a way, you could argue that Iran has actually uh, helped uh, the Iraqi government take back a lot of its territory. You can go even back to 2003 when I was a, a member of the governing council. When Saddam was uh, deposed, uh, Iran was the first country to send a high-level delegation to welcome the new order. So you can criticize our Arab neighbors for not accepting the change and, and getting on board from the early days. Yes, you, your comment is absolutely valid. The other neighbors, the Arab neighbors, should have been much more engaged. And this brings me to a, a very positive announcement which the Prime Minister has just said in the last hour, which is uh, that, uh, well, well, he said that the, uh, uh, the Saudi Arabian government has uh, agreed to open its embassy in Baghdad and appoint an ambassador. That, I think, is a, a, a move in the right direction. Moving on to the economy, uh, $22 billion in deficit uh, the Iraqi economy, the falling oil prices, as you mentioned earlier. Is the U.S. able to help out there? And what about other countries that also want the stability of Iraq? China, if of course, there'll be a meeting with the uh, Prime Minister coming up. I think it would be very helpful for our friends and allies, Iraq's friends and allies, to extend financial help, but with a proviso, with a very important proviso. There has got to be a serious curbing of corruption. Is that happening because under a body? The, again, the jury is out, and, and we don't know. Again, the intentions have been declared are good intentions, but um, uh, corruption and, and, and the forces which um, support corruption are so entrenched that this is going to be a long struggle. And I think any additional borrowing by the Iraqi government, unless it is, it is going to be managed properly is like uh, putting water in a bucket with, with no bottom to it. We also have the regional dimension. Uh, the tax revenue doesn't come in unless you control your territory. And I know you're an Iraqi nationalist. You believe in the state of Iraq. I do. But at this stage, there are a lot of commentators say Iraq has almost ceased to exist, that uh, 
The Sykes-Picot agreement that drew, redrew the Middle East has dissolved. We have ISIL, of course, in large parts of, of territory. We have the Kurds in the north uh, basically staking their claim to even more federalism, if not uh, a separate state, and a rump Shia-run state in Baghdad and to the south. Is that correct? And can we put I Iraq back together again? Well, people have been writing the obituaries of Iraq for a long time. But I, I, I think any uh, declaration of its death is premature. Uh, even Iraq. even with, with yes. next or Syria, uh, the Arab Spring? Was there is. I was in Baghdad in February. Uh, I talked to a lot of people, even when I'm here on the telephone. Look, Iraq, Iraqis generally, especially on the Arab side, uh, there, is, there is a separatist movement on the, or, or uh, at least uh, sentiment on the Kurdish side, I have to accept. But on the Arab side, I think the predominant sentiment is for Iraq to stay together. 